poor Pedro Lamy in his first Australian Grand Prix. Looks like it has ended in the first chicane. And I was going to say, very good start from Martin Brundle. But I will say that there was a small amount of creep from Alain Prost before the lights went to green. Whether it's enough for the stewards here to consider it was a jump start, I don't know. But if we see the replay, certainly for where our position is, we're almost directly above the There we see it. Well, that's a little bit late. A very good start from Damon Hill. We went for the gap in the middle, but then decided against it. Decided to go for a safe third place. But look behind that. What's happened there? There was Jello on the curbs, and it was Katayama who tried to do the tricky one. And Eddie Irvine, four wheels on the dirt, on the exit from the chicane. Now, this is the normal, what I would call, concertina effect. The cars at the back are still accelerating as the cars immediately ahead of them are hard on the brakes. Irvine forced way out to the left, had to get on the grass, and we wait now for the completion of the first lap. But one thing that is clear, Ayrton Senna has pulled out at least a second and a half lead over Alain Prost, waved yellow flags, so there will be no overtaking because there is oh Pedro Lamy's Lotus. They have not been able to pull it out of the way. This is very much a safety car situation, uh, John. The car is in the middle of the track. Well, we see the top six on our screen, but... Well, if the marshals can't get it away, then I think they are going to put the safety car out. But well, let's just wait and see what happens. Well, I suspect that Lemmy's car is stuck in gear, but now they've got probably the, just about a minute to try and get that car manhandled to safety and allow those yellow flags to be brought in. And there will be a few people who will try and outbreak into the first chicane, but you've got to be really alongside as you come past start-finish line to have any hope at all of taking that place. So Ayrton Senna leads at the end of Brevin straight on lap two. Ayrton, Alan Prost is second, then it's Damon Hill and Michael Schumacher. Behind Schumacher there's a gap to Gerhard Berger, who's got Martin Brundle right behind him. And we're on our way back to start finish. And oh that's a chase car, sorry, coming into the pits. So Ayrton Senna completes lap two out of 79. will be when the engine does the gear change for the driver his foot just remains flat on the throttle and it is all done by the onboard Ford computer incidentally Michael Schumacher just posting a new fastest lap of the race a 118.466 well he certainly recomposed himself because he had that one bad lap when he overran behind Damon Hill he dropped back he caught his breath literally and metaphorically and then he picked up the pace and he's closing down the gap some 1.2 seconds between himself and Damon Hill we've just seen the top six on our screen we're on lap six out of 79 here in Adelaide please rejoin us here on Eurosport the bonus tires then race leader Ayrton Senna is we have to wait and see Senna certainly has gone past the point where he would probably be considering coming in for a first stop for tires he's got a lead currently back to 2.8 seconds but that's because of traffic he's now into the heart of the back markers Alain Prost you can see the gap as they went past here on the start of the 19th lap was 2.8 seconds it certainly looks less than that but of course Prost now has to make his way past Andrea de Cesaris who currently runs in 16th place the Cesaris should get out of the way before the chicane let Prost get past down the main straight, or... Whoa, that Yamaha engine seems to be pretty effective these days. Yamaha engine is not a bad engine at all, and you could see an acceleration. Alan Prost did not really have any significant advantage. And now Andrea, not being as friendly maybe as he might have been, but, oh, and again, a big, big fistful of opposite locks as Andrea got those Yamaha horsepower through to the rear tyres. But that's cost Alan Prost time. The gap, three seconds, and I'm sure by the end of this the 19, 20th lap it will in fact be more than that race leader Ayrton Senna driving on to Brabham straight and look at the rubber that's done on this circuit I mean there's no way you want to drive on that piece of the, that part of the circuit do you? <laughs> the circuit is more and more treacherous as the race goes on more rubber is shred from the tyres the line that is available 
In other words, the opportunities to pass become greatly reduced. Oh, Michael Schumacher has stopped on the circuit, and it looks like it is all over for Benetton and Schumacher. Great disappointment because he was points, but it is Jean Lazy who has passed his teammate on the previous lap. So Gerhard could well be the one. Was Gerhard Berger, his Ferrari in the pits. And this is, I think, a change of compound for Berger from that he chose to start the race on. 5.83, quicker than the Williams team by half a second. And he rejoins just ahead of Carl Benlinger in seventh place. Tyre stops around lap 30 to 35. Well, it didn't work that way. Inevitably, any projections are going to be slightly different because race day and the weather this afternoon is different to that, particularly from this morning when it was a lot cooler and from Friday morning or Saturday morning. Those are the periods when teams might choose to do a little bit of comparative running on the different compounds available. Certainly Saturday morning is when they will do principal full tank running. Ayrton Senna is going to go into the pit, I think, at the end of this lap. The team is ready for him. And while Alan Prost goes past Toshio Suzuki, to the man who is being lapped again the gap is still 2.9 seconds well let's see what happens is Senna going to come into the pits or is it actually Mika Hack for how long Ayrton Senna in second place and John I suppose Cross has got to come into the pits now well depends it just depends on how much pace Ayrton Senna is going to pick up but we saw what Schumacher did instantly over a second advantage and Mika Hakkinen Still holding on to that third place, Damon Hill looking to go down the inside. Hackett and denies it, and Damon recognised it. He very wisely turned a bit early to the right to give Hackett in that room. No mercy, my son, none at all. But that's just a question of time because Damon is the quicker of the two, and he will take Mika Hackett and uh, maybe the end of Brevin Street. Hello. Damon Hill, is he going to go to get third place back? Yes, he is. A very good move. Well, I hope Damon wasn't listening to me. I think he knows how to drive a race car, but you could horsepower. He could get past. Good, aggressive, and positive overtaking maneuver from Damon Hill. He will try and, and work that strategy. It will depend on a number of factors. He will try and read it really lap by lap. But if anybody is capable of going through from lap 28 to 30, let's say, all the way for a further 49 laps, Alan Prost, your man. Alan Prost having a lot of understeer there going through that right-hander and, well, the man is very precise indeed, but he might have come in very soon to change his tyres. He might have just lost grip. Although Ayrton Senna is only a tenth of a second faster so far. Well, I think what Prost is doing really is not allowing himself to get drawn too closely to Patrese in the parts of the track where overtaking isn't possible anyway. And he's going to try and create a, the slingshot effect to pick up the draft from Patrese's car and get past on a part of the circuit where passing is easier. He's not quite close enough to do it. Well, that's the one point of the circuit. I think Prost anticipated he could overtake Patrese. Patrese traditionally doesn't let you acquiesce quite as much as other drivers might do. He felt that he was sufficiently far in front of Alan Prost at the end of the straight. Prost now will, I suspect, wait until he gets all the way back onto Jones Street for Mika Hakkinen. That's your leader, Ayrton Senna, leading Alan Prost, Damon Hill, Jean Lazy, Aguri Suzuki and Gerhard Berger in sixth. Martin Brundle is in seventh position, just outside the point, in front of Carl Wendlinger and JJ Leto. Now what Senna's going to be looking for is as much clear air as possible. Very shortly he's going to catch up to Ricardo Patrese, and then he's got the two Cybers ahead of that, so those are not going to be easy cars to pass. Senna's going to have to use all his wisdom in a car to make sure that he can get past and parts of the circuit where he's got an advantage, but not get delayed and round here, for example, almost impossible to pass. John, Damon Hill is currently the fastest driver on the circuit. Ayrton Senna is doing an 18.1, Alain Prost an 18.4, Damon Hill a 17.6. So maybe we should have a look at Damon Hill being the dark horse at this moment. But having said that, there's a long way to go. It's very hot 
and we've seen quite a few mechanical retirements. Typical of Adelaide. Everybody's tired when they come here. Sometimes some of the equipment that teams use isn't as fresh as they would have at the start of a season. And there we are looking all the way back down the Brabham Strait. Mark Blundell, Derek Warwick, and there Alan Prost in second place. 15 seconds behind the race leader, Ayrton Senna. Of course, Damon Hill's out there to prove a point, John, that he's basically just as quick as Alan Prost. Which he is at the moment. He is 4.2 seconds behind, but he's a little quicker. 18-0 for Ayrton Senna, and I'm a little bit disappointed with those lap times. When Schumacher went out on his new set after the pit stop, he did that 17-0, which is still a second of his best that he put down last year, but they're not getting close, are they? Well, as I said, when Senna made his stop for fresh tyres, he got caught in traffic, and those initial three or four laps when the tyre is at its best, the advantage that he had with those tyres was last in traffic. So now he's back to a much more stable position and you're not going to see the kind of electric lap that you saw from Michael Schumacher after his very early stop. Continue his progress and his attack on Alain Prost. And Senna, well everybody's caught in traffic now. Senna back to doing 119s. Alain Prost behind Mark Blundell and Damon Hill lost half a second over Alain Prost being caught behind Derek Warwick. But now maybe Damon can get that back on this lap. But Senna's got a problem, he's got JJ Leto and Carl Wendlinger ahead. And again the same problem is top speed. McLaren have gone for a race setup which is not optimizing on top speed. It's trying to capitalize on pole position and that means they've got a little bit more downforce with their car this afternoon than maybe they would have run had they not been in pole position. Well done JJ, you saw him. You raised your hand, you haven't lost position. You probably lost nothing. Andrea de is making up the point. Oh! Yes, and there's Mark Blundell who held up Alain Prost for a long time. If Damon Hill can get past, and he can, he's right with the Frenchman. So Alain Prost has lost a lot of time behind Mark Blundell and Damon Hill's caught up right with him. Now, John, also the crucial time difference has got to be between Alain Prost and Ayrton Senna is, let's say, roughly 11 seconds. And, well, Prost had it down to 11.9. It's going to be down to traffic, Alain. I think the whole race is going to be strategy, using the traffic to your advantage and not getting caught out in it. You want to be sure that when you see a car ahead of you that you're about to lap, that you don't get caught in this part of the circuit. You want to try and judge your pace against that other car ahead of you, but ensure that on the parts of the circuit where you have advantage or you've got the potential to overtake, you're in position to do so. Now we're watching, in the course of doing so, his hat blew off. He ran all the way across the track. He then had to wait for another gap to run all the way back to pick up the offending part, as well as his hat. And I hate to see people on a racetrack during a Grand Prix. Well, other than driving a car, you mean? I think that's the case. Now what I'm a little bit concerned about is who is going to be first to make the stop for their second set of tyres, Senna or Prost. I would like to see Senna make it first because that will then in my view, give him the final advantage for this final part of the Grand Prix. If Prost comes in first, he gets out cleanly, he won't have any interference from Ayrton Senna on his entry. That could swing the pendulum back again. But it's a great race, great strategy between both two, the two best drivers in the world and the two best teams in the world. Yeah, the only thing that's a pity, John, is that they're not very close together on the racetrack, I suppose. Well, Senna did not come in on that lap. So Ayrton Senna is going to complete lap 48 out of 79. And his lap times are still in the middle to high 1 minute 17. Alain Prost is about to car into the pits, goes Alain Prost. I think what Senna might be doing, Alain, is actually using the benefit of track, the clear track, to establish as much of a gap between himself and Prost as he can. And as soon as he comes up against serious back markers, 6.92, not brilliant, but clean, back out in the race, and that's Prost's final stop. But looking back at Senna, I suspect as soon as he has the hints of any traffic, he will then come in. So Prost out on a fresh set of tyres. Damon Hill is not very far behind him. 
Kirby saw Cross lose quite a lot of time on his outlap on this very first set of tyres. The other thing to watch, Allard, is there are 20 laps to the end of this race. There's 29 seconds between Senna and uh, Alain Prost. Is the gap, can it be closed by Prost on fresh tyres? Or is Senna going to do something which we have seen him do many years before? Take a calculated risk and stay with just one set. Again, it's a race about strategy between driver and pit communication, letting Senna know what Prost is doing, and Prost obviously getting clear signals from his pits on the speed that he is closing down. Edmund Senna, indeed it does, and Damon Hill looks like he's capable of going quicker. I'm sure if Damon didn't have the distraction of Alan Prost in front of him, he could actually go quicker, and uh, well, Senna we see now rounding the hairpin band for the 53rd time. The pit lane directly behind the McLaren pits is reasonably clear, but I must say the Benetton lollipop man standing for some reason far too far out, and that is slight distraction for the McLaren pits. They would like Benetton and Ferrari, who have recorded their second tyre stops, just to clear out and give Senna a much clearer run into his pit. I think Ayrton will uh, come in pretty soon because now the tyre warmers are off the tyres while well, we have a look at the top 12 on our screen. Senna 117.192 and of course then we've got to wait for Alain Prost. There he is right in front of us because we are riding with Damon Hill and Prost has got traffic ahead of him. And just as we said the tyre warmers came off Senna's second set of tyres. They've been put back on again because he's completed Yet another lap, on his 54th, out of 79, second place man, third place man, J.J. Later, who has been very cooperative so far in the race. Well, the brilliant stop from McLaren men, and this, in my view, has been the winning play for this Australian Grand Prix. John, if you just said before the year that Ayrton Senna was going to win five Grand Prix with McLaren, with Senna you can never predict what his potential is the half a second but that will be closed down again by the time they reach the end of the straight and we see Ayrton Senna just to put a lap on last year's winner Gerhard Berger the man in fifth position so everybody up to Berger will then be lapped and Gerhard well how cooperative would he be they were teammates for three years He's not going to fool around that much. He might tweak his tail a bit. That's Gerhardt's nature. But he's not going to do something that is deliberately going to inflict a punishment on Senna for those three years by casting him time in his lead over Alain Prost. Actually, Gerhardt's lap times, John, are not that much slower than Ayrton Senna's at the moment. Senna's doing 17.8. Gerhardt did a 1.17.9 on that previous lap. So we uh, had a look through the top 12. But it's going to be at the end of the straight that Senna will look for some cooperation from Gerhard Berger. Whether he'll get it now, that's we're going to wait and see. There's certainly too much of a gap for Senna to do anything about it. And remember that his McLaren was slower down the straight this morning by, well, it was some four miles an hour. Again, doesn't sound a great deal, but it prevented the gap being reduced. Well, Ayrton closing the gap on this part of the circuit but as soon as we put the power down like you can see here we see Berger running away from it well Senna again very late on the brakes and trying to get on the throttle very early to use any braking advantage he might have and Gerhard I think with an oil flag there being shown I think that's more to do with the accident we saw from later there may be debris on the circuit bits of bodywork and uh, certainly a bit of gravel and lots of dust and dirt well, Gerhardt looking in his mirror, you can see as his head bends over to the left, he can, out of his peripheral vision, see that Senna is on his tail. He's just sort of playing around a little bit. He's not doing something that is deliberate to slow Senna down. And Senna now closer as they come on to Jones Strait. And I think by the time they end, a Brabham Strait arises, he's going to be in position. He's uh, getting, his, getting his hand out of the cockpit, John. Senna was... Like Gerhardt, you see? Yep, the hands out there. I think the gesture was something more than just waving a finger. Well, Gerhardt stayed way over to the left. 
he had a bit of fun and games for the day. He certainly tweaked the tail, not just of Senna, but of McLaren, Williams, Bennett and everybody else in the pit lane yesterday afternoon when he ran 18 laps in a session where only 12 are permitted. The penalty was a loss of times from the Saturday session, but of course, as it was a hot session and nobody had gone quicker, but Damon Hill certainly showing more than just his nose to teammate Alain Brass. That was the first indication that Damon Hill is getting fed up following his teammate. Derek Warwick up to 10. And uh, Ruben Spericello up to 11. But Senna still leading. We're at the end of lap 76. And he's now got John Alesi in his sights with three laps to go. Alain Prost some 13 seconds behind. So I don't think anything's going to happen. Who would have thought that when the John Lazy had that absolutely blinding Grand Prix debut at Paul Ricard in 1989 that we would have seen Jean Lazy still waiting for his first Grand Prix victory. He said this is his third season at Ferrari. He had all the potential and one might begin to question the judgment in the case of staying at Ferrari for that length of time. And as he compounded that judgment by staying for at least one more year and possibly two. You know, three years of a driver's life is three years. A lazy, had he been at McLaren or Williams, as he could have been certainly for 1991, could have been world champion, could have won 12, 15 or more Grand Prix. So, Ayrton Senna, he's won uh, 40 until this race. He's on his way of winning his 41st Grand Prix. And in only 158 Formula One races. I mean, that is remarkable, John. Well, one thing I think is pretty clear, that next year he's not going to stop winning because he's going to have this car, the car Alain Prost, is vacating. And at present, it is a permanent vacation. Alan Prost is going to become, for the first time probably in his life, a normal human being. Well, Toshio Suzuki is in a 13th position. Uh, sorry, 15th position, but still going round. And he's done more laps than I think he would have, uh, he would have thought he would. Well, of course, Suzuki, Toshio Suzuki's big battle is going to come next weekend back at Suzuka in Formula 3000, the final round of the Japanese Championship. And another man that's going to be there will be Eddie Irvine, who is in contention for that championship. So it's back to the, the bread and butter. And this is the best farewell present he could give to the team, John. Indeed it is, and it's been an absolutely outstanding, superb, all the superlatives for Senna. He has driven masterfully throughout the weekend, he secured, pulled. Well, Anala, I wonder what's going through his mind now, because that is the last time he's seen a checkered flag in the Formula One car. Well, this is what he has said, and uh, as we said on Saturday's broadcast, there are the usual sceptics and hit lane who think that maybe he might be persuaded certainly there is enough people out there to try and persuade him to continue with his motor racing but there's a man who really does deserve the applause of this Australian crowd he has driven I think one of the finest Grand Prix I've ever seen him drive he never at any point put a wheel wrong and there he looks well, Brazilian I was going to say <laughs> is he looking Brazilian or not but certainly the Brazilian flag and Senna justifiably delighted with his effort and McLaren likewise have battled all through 1993 they had a dip in the middle European season particularly on the faster circuits where they seemed to struggle to find the right balance of aerodynamics over speed but as is inevitable with the McLaren team they put their heads down, they get all of the job and they recovered and they won the final two Grand Prix of 1993. I have to say, against a car which in my mind still is quicker. 
So, Ayrton Senna, Grand Prix victory, number 41. Alain Prost finished second. Then Damon Hill third. And Damon Hill finishes third in the Drivers' World Championship. And this man, Ayrton Senna, finishes second. Damon Hill did get the fastest lap here. A new lap record, 115.381. It's Jean Alesi in fourth, Gerhard Berger in fifth. <laughs> well, I think he might have switched the traction control off for that little manoeuvre. And that is just an example of the joy that Senna is feeling. And Damon Hill, I think, has tried to do for six years of partnership. And it has been a partnership in which at times there's been strong differences of opinion. The two toughest guys I've ever met in motor racing are Ron Dennis and Senna like the difference between a rock and a hard place and now I wonder will there be an acknowledgement from Alan Frost to Ayrton Senna or are they going to continue the the differences they have I wonder what he's thinking at the moment well Ron Dennis the first man to get to Senna and there will be a genuine sadness that this partnership is over and I wonder whether if they could put the clock back three months and say well am I doing the right thing Ron do you think so or Ron might say to Ayrton are you sure you've done the right thing Ayrton you know you said we'll meet again next year and Alain Prost undoubtedly disappointed that his final Grand Prix did not end on the winner's podium looking around the back of the car very lonely yes he is he is indeed <laughs> on his own thinking about his very last Formula One race. Alain Prost, Le Professeur, and there is an emotional there in Senna. Well, Damien's being pushed into the garage. I think he finally stalled that engine, actually. Yep, it looked like it done it. They have been banned at the end of Brabham Strait. Well, it's all part of a, an education for Damon. He certainly indicated at three-quarter distance that he was capable of running quicker than Alain and I just wonder maybe this well Ron Dennis walking over and saying well done to his former employee a man that won two championships three championships in fact for the McLaren team two with the tag turbo and one with the Honda V12 Joe Ramirez from Mexico who worked years and years ago back in sports car racing with the Gulf Porsche team and in particular Pedro Rodriguez another Mexican a great driver and the bond a very strong bond from those two Latin Americans and there we see Goodyear taking the final information there peeling away all the debris that was picked up the engineers getting the tire temperatures such as they are of course the cars and the slowing down that would have lost considerable temperature and now all the Brazilian fans and the few Brazilians that live in Australia saluting their man Ayrton Senna this championship his impressions of a very very sophisticated piece of equipment indeed